Well, listen, I'll tell you, the, we're not going to agree on this. What I see is that you've conjured up a ballpark estimate of the percentage of gays in the military. You're making the assumption that all same-sex sexual assault is done by homosexuals. You found a slightly higher proportion are by people you assume are gay. And even though the numbers are incredibly small samples, you assume homosexuals are more prone to sexual assault. So listen, to me, it seems like, uh, like bizarre math set to serve your specific agenda. But I'll tell you, let me give you some personal experience. When gay marriage was legalized in Massachusetts, we had the anti-gay crowd and the God hates fags people from Kansas saying the world is going to fall apart. Here we were the first to legalize gay marriage. Everything's fine. It's, I get to work out okay, the roads are fine, businesses are running, people are going to school. Everything's absolutely fine, and there's no reason to think it won't be exactly the same in the U.S. as it was in the U.K. when they allowed openly gay soldiers to serve in the military. Nothing happened. Literally nothing happened. Well, uh, I'll tell you this. Um, first, the sun is going to come up tomorrow, as best we know. That's right. No matter what we do, you can go out and kill 50 people, and it'll still come up. <laughs> but if, if it's the wrong 50 people, if some of those people were going to invent the next big thing, like the Internet, and you kill them, uh, life is going to change. And I would argue that homosexual activity is so compelling for those who enjoy it. that In the same way that sexual activity is compelling for those that enjoy it on a heterosexual level. No, it's more than that. Uh, for instance, uh, think of AIDS. Uh, everybody knows how not to get AIDS. That is, if you stay away from rectal sex, your chances of getting HIV infection are almost zip. Uh, obviously, you've got to stay away from shooting drugs, too. Do those two things. Maybe here and there you'll get a bad bit of blood. Maybe here and there you'll run into someone, but you're not going to get it. Well, what about, what, a, this, what about uh, everybody? Let me, let me finish. Yeah. We've known this now for about at least 15 years, for sure, certain sure. Okay. And we have... Ongoing, according to the CDC, somewhere between 20 and 30,000 new gays getting HIV infected, the same old way, rectal sex. And, man, uh, I'll tell you, no matter whether I enjoyed it or not, uh, if one kind of sex with a woman would mean that I could get uh, a deadly disease like this, I'd stop it. And I think most people can. Hmm. But uh, apparently... Uh, we we got something here so compulsive, so compelling, um, I guess so entertaining. Well, I've just, I, I, it's interesting. I've never heard that, that homosexual sex is somehow more interesting and, and captivating than heterosexual sex. We have very limited time left. We've already gone over. You don't subscribe to the slippery slope school of thought that if we legalize gay marriage, we're opening the door to people marrying animals, do you? I know I hear a lot of people suggesting that. I think that's improbable. I think the multiple marriage, probably. But what's more important is, demographically, the big unspoken problem in our society, one that I can't get the Republicans to pay attention to, nor the Democrats, is that while the United States is at 2.1 children per woman, we're still demographically okay. The rest of the West is collapsing, and we should not be and uh, in any way encouraging people not to uh, live up to their demographic duty, get married, have kids, have at least two or three or four kids. <laughs> and that, anything that doesn't do that, yeah. runs afoul of the Roman law. You know, under, under the empire's law, you could not inherit property unless right. you got married and had kids. That was a sensible law. Yeah, well, you know, it's it, we can point back to when slavery was legal. Just because something is an old law doesn't mean that it's that it's worth following. I'll tell sure. you, we're, we're out of time. We've been speaking with Paul Cameron. I think the only thing we'll agree on is that we've just talked on the radio for about 12 minutes. Beyond that, I can't think of anything else that I agree with you on. But I thank you for calling in today. Hey, you bet. Take, Take care. care. Okay, we'll take a break, Lewis. Uh, <laughs> We'll need a little time to recover from, from some of those ideas, and we'll be back with more after this. This episode of Midweek Politics has been made possible in part by Just Coffee Cooperative, fair trade coffee from around the world, roasted daily at justcoffee.coop. 